My name is Sivu Makrungo. I am with the Mission of South Africa to the United Nations based in New York. I have come to this meeting as one of the co-chairs on an issue pertaining to governance of marine in areas beyond national jurisdiction. And what we are focusing on is to see exactly what kind of assistance first we can provide to the EDWAC working group that is going to start in New York on a similar subject which begins on the 28th of April this month. Uh, and so the working group that we're working on is looking at, amongst other issues, is the cooperation between states on the issue of governance uh, in areas beyond national jurisdiction. It's looking at issues such as what pertains to exploration and exploitation of genetic resources. It's looking at issues such as what is the legal regime that applies to genetic resources in particular. So what we are attempting to do by this working group is outside the confines of the UN, outside the confines of the restrictions that apply in terms of states where you're pushing state positions, simply putting on our expert heads and coming up with out-of-the-box solutions to some of these problems. For example, with the issue of genetic resources, when the Convention on the Law of the Sea was finalized in 1982, the genetic resources itself was not mentioned there as one of the resources which is explicitly governed by the Convention on the Law of the Sea. And so some argue that because it was not mentioned, it was deliberately left out. Others, however, argue that it was simply an oversight because nobody was thinking of those kind of resources at the time. Some argue that you've got to look back at the reason why the Law of the Sea Convention was in the first place adopted, and that was to ensure that you reduce or totally eliminate conflict or potential conflict based upon economy in the area, which is in areas beyond national jurisdiction. And the only way you can reduce or totally eliminate conflict is that almost every aspect in terms of activity in areas beyond national jurisdiction has to be regulated. And so those who argue this argue that the Convention on the Law of the Sea is the basis that regulates including activities on genetic resources. And the basis of that is, of course, is that it then arises as to what is really the regulation there. And the, the principle which is argued is that the principle that applies is the principle of common heritage of mankind. Activity in the area which results in commerce, particularly in respect of minerals, that must be looked at through the prism of common heritage of mankind. Whereas you have argued, others who argue that, no, there's another principle to be considered, and that is the principle of freedom of the high seas. First come, first served. But between those, which principle is more consistent with the basis on which the convention was adopted? And that basis simply being to reduce or eliminate potential conflict. The principle that says freedom of the high seas simply means that first come, first serve, that will result in conflict. Whereas common heritage of mankind, that is for everybody, and so it results in a well-regulated ma manner. So we're trying to come up with a way in which we could marry these and make sure that what is done in the area is consistent with the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea.